Isotopes are elements with different numbers of neutrons. Let's look at a few. Hydrogen comes in several different flavors or isotopes. You can think of isotopes as a different flavor of the same element. Hydrogen with a single neutron would have a mass of two. One proton and one neutron in the nucleus makes a mass of two. Any element that has one proton in its nucleus is hydrogen. But I can have hydrogen with a single proton, I can have hydrogen with an additional neutron, or hydrogen with two additional neutrons of mass three. So that's interesting. Same element, different masses. So you cannot determine the identity of an element by looking at its mass alone. You must know the number of protons in its nucleus. Take this piece of carbon, for instance. This piece of carbon is what we call pure carbon. But that doesn't mean that every single atom is exactly the same. Some of the atoms in this piece of carbon have six protons and six neutrons, and some of the carbons have six protons and seven neutrons. Their carbon-13, six protons and seven neutrons, makes a mass of 13. Only about 1% of the carbon are carbon-13, but that's a lot when you're talking about billions and billions of atoms. 1% is a significant number of atoms that have that carbon-13 designation. So remember, when we talk about pure carbon, it does not mean every single atom is the same. The isotopes exist naturally. When you dig carbon out of the ground, you naturally get some carbon-13. You also get a tiny bit of carbon-14. Now, carbon-14 is a radioactive nucleus. It's a nucleus that decays to other elements. It's an element that we use, for instance, in carbon dating. Because if you take a piece of carbon and isolate it, the carbon-14 will decay away over time. So if you compare amounts of carbon-14, you can tell how long that piece of carbon has existed. And that's the basis of carbon dating. If we look at oxygen, oxygen has several isotopes. Oxygen-16 and 18 are very common isotopes of oxygen. And they have different masses. And different masses can give you different properties. So you can have the same element with slightly different properties. For instance, say we took a water molecule, H2O, and we made it out of oxygen-16 or oxygen-18. The oxygen-18 water molecule would be slightly heavier. And that slightly heavier molecule would evaporate at a slightly higher temperature than the lighter oxygen-16 water molecule. Now, you might think that that's not a very big deal. But if you take and you look at water as it snows from the atmosphere, as it's deposited on ice caps, there's a mixture of oxygen-18 and oxygen-16 water. The temperature of the environment determines the ratio of oxygen-16 to oxygen-18 water. So here's the cool part. If you take a piece of ice, an ancient piece of ice, so you dr dig down in uh, the Arctic, deep, deep into the ice to get ancient ice, and you measure the ratio of oxygen-16 to oxygen-18, that tells you the temperature during which that ice was deposited. So you can get ancient temperatures from the isotopes of water. And I'm sure you've all heard in the days of global warming, we can look back in history and see what those temperatures are. And that's how we do it. We look at the isotopic, isotopic ratios of water in ancient ice to determine ancient temperatures. So isotopes, different flavors of the same element with a different number of neutrons in the nucleus.